Hello class. Today we'll be looking at 12.5, problem solving with normal, the normal distribution. So in this section, we're going to solve applied problems involving normal distribution. So, you know, in the last section, 12.4, we went through um, the characteristics of normal distribution, how normal distribution works, and how it looks. So, for our first example, it says, according to the Department of Health and Education, um, cholesterol levels are normally distributed for men between 18 and 24 years. The, the mean is 178.1, and the standard deviation is 40.7. It says, what percentage of men in the average um, range have a cholesterol level less than 239? Point fifteen. It says the first. So basically, we want to compute, uh, compute the z score for two hundred and thirty nine point one five. So let's look and see what we got. So we know that the z score from the last section we had is equal to the data item minus the mean over the standard deviation. So we know what the data item is. Is what two thirty nine. Then we need to minus the mean, which is what? 178.1. Now, all that is over our standard deviation, which they give us here, which is 40.7. So, we put this in the calculator. Now, if you put the top in first, this is going to be 60, 1.05 all over 40.7, then that'll equal 1.5. <clears throat> now, if you remember, so let's look. Now, we're actually trying to find what? The percentage. Now, there's a chart in your book. All right. If you look at it, chart in your book in twelve. It should be one in twelve point four and one in twelve point five. That you can actually see, and you will go to. Let me show you. It says we must find the percentage of men with cholesterol levels less than. Z equal to 1.5. The table gives us this percentage as a percentile. Finding 1.5 is the Z score in the column. It gives you a percentile of 93.32. Thus, 93.32 of men, uh, of men between 18 and 24 have cholesterol levels less than to 239.5. So if you go to that big table in your book, you find 1.5, and then you'll see the percentile beside it. Now, if you don't see the big table in your book, just let me know. But you should see it in section 12. Point, you'll see it in section 12.4, and you'll see it in section 12.5. It's a big, it's a big table. You can't miss it. Now, remember, I told you when you look at the table, it gives you the stuff that's below it, right? So, anything, anytime you get one of those ones that say above, you have to look at the opposite sign. So, let's say if this said above instead of below, you would look at negative one point five, so you can see what's below that, which would be the same as what will be above. 1.5 because think about it if let's say if we had something like this and we said that our so we got one standard so remember 
when you look at the Z table, Z score table, if I'm using a different color, go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Alright. So 1.5 would be what? Around here. So if we drew an imaginary line through that, now everything below would be what? That direction. Because a standard uh, standard distribution is what? Symmetric. So if you know that you're trying to find everything below, that means you will have a high percentile when you're dealing in the positive, uh, when you're dealing in the positive standard deviations. Now, if you look at what's above, if you was ever looking at what's above, right, it'll be the same exact thing what's below negative 1.5. Now, if you have any questions about that, let me know. So, so it says finding the percent the percentage of data items between two given data items. It says find the percentage of the of data items between two given data items um, of the normal distribution. Convert each into a z-score. So, the first thing you got to do is find the z-score. Second thing you gotta do is use this, the table, ta use table 12.16. So that's gonna be in your book to find the percentiles corresponding to each um, Z score in the table. Now it says subtract the lesser percentile from the greater percentile and attach a percent to it. So basically, you're going through the process of finding these things. And then you will do what? Take the difference of them. So let's actually go through a problem where we actually do that. So we have this problem here. It says the amount of time that self-employed Americans work each week is normally distributed with a mean of 44.6 hours and a standard deviation of 14.4 hours. It said, what percentage of self-employed individuals in the United States work between 37 and 80.6 hours per week? Now, first thing we'll do is use the first thing. Use the 37.4. Let's find that one. So, we're going to do what? We will do 37.4 minus 44.6 all over 14.4 hours. All right. Now, we're going to put that in our calculators. So we got 37.4 minus 44.7, I mean 44.6, all over 14.4. Now, and when we put that in our calculators, we'll get negative 0 0.5. Now we'll do the same thing with the one that's on the bottom. We'll do 80.6 minus our 44.6 all over 14.4. And then this is equal to 2.6. I mean 2.4. I mean 2.5, sorry. That's our first step. Now what did it tell us to do? Let's go to the next step. It says use the table to find the percentiles that correspond with these z-scores. The percentile corresponding with negative uh, 0 0.5 is what? 30. The 30 percentile. This means that 30.85% 30, 30, uh, 
of self-employed Americans work fewer than 37 hours per week. It says the table shows the percentile for the correspondent uh, to a Z-score of 2.5 would be 99.38. So it's 99.38%. All right. So that means that what? 99.38% of self-employed Americans work fewer than 80.6 hours per week. Now, let's look at this. Now we take what? The 99.38% minus the 30.85% the and then you get 68.53%. That means that 68.53% of self-employed Americans work between 37.4 and 80.6 hours per week. So basically you should track the two to get the, the basically get what's in between the two. Does that make sense? So make sure when you're doing these problems, you understand what you're doing. Now, if you get stuck, or you know you can send me a message through Microsoft Teams, or you can send me an email. Faster, faster method is Microsoft Teams. Now, these this is basically a summary of computing the data items uh, for a normal distribution. So it says. It said percentage of data items less than a given data item with Z is equal to B. It says use the table percentile for Z is equal to B, then add a percent sign. So you just look at the table, and you look whatever you get for the Z score, and then you add a percent sign. Now, instructions, it says what? Percentage of data items greater than a given data item with a Z equal to A. So when you try to find greater than, it says what? Subtract the table percentage uh, for the Z score of Z equal to A from 100 and add a percent sign. So basically, you're finding the percent on the other side. So you're basically saying we got 100 minus whatever the percent that you got on the thing when you're trying to find what's greater than, right? Or you can look at the negative of that number. It'll be the same thing. It says the percentage of data items between two given data uh, items with Z is equal to A and Z is equal to B. It says subtract the percent for Z is equal to A from the percent of Z is equal to B and add a percent sign. So that's what we just did a few seconds ago. We added the two together. I mean, we subtract. We found the two different Z scores. And then we what? Subtracted them, and that that fact, we that's how we found out the percentage, the percentage between them. Now, make sure if you got any questions about this, you make sure you hit me up on Microsoft Teams or you hit me up on uh, email.